Hi, uh, I'm Janet Culbertson. This is my home on Shelter Island. Now I've done my 35 years in New York City. And now I'm on Shelter Island and I do uh, animal uh, paintings and drawings. This is to add on to the others. You saw the big, uh, the big elephant. Uh, these are small ones. I've learned my lesson. Smaller ones can be portable, can be seen everywhere, and can be rolled up. So this is, when I was, um, I grew up in western Pennsylvania near Pittsburgh, Greensburg, and then went to Carnegie Tech, which is now called Carnegie Mellon, a very, very up-to-date place. Uh, and it was quite wonderful when I went there. We were the silent generation. We uh, never talked about anything. And of course, we were terribly boring, I think. But at any rate, the uh, story was you had to come to New York if you wanted to do anything in the art world. So we all came to New York, had $50, and came and moved in on a friend's couch. So uh, this many years later, 50 years later, I've got lots of artwork. This is part of it. The small uh, drawings are of animals I've seen for the most part, except for the snow leopard, which I would love to see someday, if that ever can happen. And meanwhile, I've done the disintegration of the uh, landscape. I think I became an environmentalist when I was 10. We were canoeing on a river. The river was clear, was beautiful, and suddenly it's orange. And there are rocks floating in it, cinder rocks, tailings from mines. This was, Pennsylvania was a free fall mine place at one point. Now they have to clean up, which is good, but they're still mining at any rate. They have people that support the mines because they make a lot of money and a lot of pollution. So I have, uh, from this point on, uh, from living in Greensburg, coming to New York City, I did a, uh, some landscapes to start with because I was connecting to a new area, which was Long Island. Long Island was the area from New York City you could get to overnight. You could get to in a couple of hours and then you would have a beautiful uh, experience here for the weekend and we ended up living here full time in 1985. I did a series called the Industrial Park, which was the industrialization of the landscape, and the audacity of calling uh, a, an industrial area a park really struck me. It wasn't a park, it was a commercial place. At any rate, I did that, I did it, worked on a billboard series, and I'm still doing those series, because I think the billboard is the history of what's happening in our environment. We see, uh, we have the COVID on the billboard, we have uh, various other things, we have uh, urging us to buy and use our resources, and we're trying to preserve them. Uh, I did a series of animals, and I thought they deserved large drawings, because they're large animals. And in particular, I felt the elephants were being horribly mistreated. They're being killed for their ivory, uh, the babies are being uh, abandoned, at, and their mother's carcasses are left, and it's, it's terrible to see what happens to them. And we went to Africa, and we did take a safari, but it was a photo safari, of course. And we saw a number of animals. They swim. The, the elephants swim. And because they're so big, they're buoyant. They go through the water beautifully. This was, is a tribute to the ones that are being poached and killed for their, for their ivory. Uh, many organizations are trying to save them, but still they're in uh, a war sometimes with the people actually of the area because they come through their gardens. I had a show uh, recently at Stony Brook, no, not Stony Brook, Southhold College uh, of Endangered Animals, and I had a chance to show these large works, which I do not often get a chance. You know, they're 12 feet and 10 feet, and they roll up, and I have uh, trouble storing them in a shed, whatever and I need to find a good home for them, actually. Okay, the animals that I've depicted, I've had a personal experience with, with the exception of the snow leopard, which I'd love to see. But all the rest, are, uh, the, uh, from the elephants to the uh, giraffe to any of the other creatures, even javelinas, I've had an experience where I've seen them pretty much up close, not in a zoo, and then depicted them out of a tribute and they were uh, shown in this uh, exhibit called Endangered, which is at the Southhold College. They were shown in uh, the Benson Gallery many, many years ago, and never had a chance to be seen in New York City. Uh, 
I think the size is a difficult problem, but uh, also sometimes it's harder to get a political message across. People want to see something that's uh, pretty rather than something that's dying or having a problem existing. Uh, the material, I love paper. Uh, I have collected it. This is a, a large size paper. It's pretty hard to find. It's rag. And then I use uh, India ink and I use black pastel. And those two uh, just seem to go well with the paper. The India sometimes I pour it a little bit and I spray it a little bit and then I tape out with white tape some of the areas that I want to have remain white. And I think the paper is, is pretty durable. Uh, I don't know about 2,000 years, but it does seem to last pretty well. The, the series of animals that I've done, about uh, 12, 13, 14, um, fit with my philosophical outlook, which is that the whole of nature is actually endangered. Uh, some of my work deals with uh, the industrialization of it, industrial park. Some of it deals with uh, the billboards, which urge us to buy and consume and devour and use up everything. And it's smart to have the best car or the best uh, piece of pair of boots or whatever it is that they're selling. And none of these things are really uh, uh, important. They really just <clears throat> help to use up what we have in our environment. During the pandemic, we heard from the Stony Brook Museum of Art and History and said, who said, what are you artists, how are you treating this? How are you handling this? And my thought was, this is death we're handling. We're de dealing with a, a tipping point in our society where uh, illness and, and disease have been uh, stimulated by how we're treating the earth. So I did this, actually it was quite a large drawing. And this is a print, which I like to keep for my own reference and it's dealing with the doctors and nurses and people. This one dealing with the people uh, the idea of the, what is facing us in the background is, is the skull. And then, of course, this red one is dealing, it's a reference to the Poe mask of the Red Death, where everyone went to a party and beneath their masks was the, the evil uh, kind of disease waiting to lure them. Um, the Stony Brook Museum also took several of these works, which I was delighted because it's not that easy to have a museum um, take something that is, shall we say, using a difficult idea. It's, it's much easier to place a decorative piece. This is my oil-soaked gull. Uh, way back in the 60s, I believe it was the Torrey Canyon, had a big oil spill. And it was horrifying. At that point, we were actually living in California, I remember, going to the beach, and they were oil, oil clumps on the beach that looked like cow pads, actually. And it was all over this beach. And that was uh, the first big oil spill that I experienced. And I came back and I'd read about how the animals, the gulls, the seabirds were being uh, destroyed and drowned in this stuff. And this was the artwork that uh, I was inspired to do where I tried to get the feel of oil dripping and this is also a, a collage where different pieces were cut out from a uh, paper that I had covered with uh, paint and actually uh, water and different kinds of things, even some chemical stuff that, that turned it uh, and made it frail. Now the original, this is a print. I don't know where the original went. I mean, how, how do you hang on to a piece of work from the, the 1960s? But at any rate, this is a decent print, so at least I've got a memorial of it. But this was the beginning, the environmental piece. From this, I went on to do all kinds of things, uh, not just oil spills, but uh, ecological disasters and uh, uh, plastic, the use of plastic, which we all tried not to use. And uh, the billboard series, the, uh, the uh, industrial park series, the 9-11 series, well, had to do different things at different times in order to stay reasonably fresh because I can't just paint one thing for all of my life. In fact, uh, as a teacher, I really felt that I was a preacher. I was telling people through art that you really can have a whole new life or a whole new experience. You can feel something 
that maybe you've never felt before. It was just, uh, to me, the most incredible uh, kind of experience to have a painting take your breath away, which doesn't happen as often as it should. <laughs> At any rate, uh, that's, uh, that set off a whole series of works. Okay, this work, I called it The Abyss, and it was actually chosen by uh, Lillian Ball for the Artists Choose Artists exhibit, and she put it in the Parish Museum, for which I was delighted. Uh, she was an environmentalist that became very much of an activist, planting and saving uh, endangered places and animals. I have to do the materials. I love the art materials. I love the colors of paints. Uh, even if they're environmentally unsafe, they're still wonderful to use. And we try not to breathe them too, uh, too heavily. But this is uh, kind of an ending piece. It was uh, thinking of an environment that will no longer exist, which are plenty of them are uh, occurring right now. In, in uh, this particular work, I've used uh, a lot of glitter. I like it as a, uh, because I hate it. Uh, I started using it about 10 years ago, and I was inspired going to the dump, and you see all the sparkle of the broken glass. And it's so pretty, and it's, yet it's, it's not a good, good thing. It's a, it's a negative thing. It's garbage. So I used that in this because we have all these uh, marching giants, I call them, these wires and what do you call these things that uh, these huge things that have all carry all the wires across the country? Um, the grid. They're more than telephone poles. They're they're too enormous to be telephone. Anyhow, that was an idea of thinking about them, where they have something attractive in a certain kind of way, and yet they're not uh, good for our environment or for uh, the animals in particular. This is part of the industrial park series, and most of those have uh, had a little bit more trouble being ending up over your couch. <laughs> this is a print of a piece I called The Warming. I imagined our planet breaking and cracking open and magda bubbling to the surface. Uh, so I did a few of these works, and the original is under glass, which accounts for this being a print, and I have some glitter in it as well as some paint. I like to work on the surface, even though it's a, a print. I did a series of babbles. Uh, we have the White House to thank for my series of babble because of our the president that we had for four years, which was uh, not only bringing about a, a communication problem, but actually a destruction of democracy, in my view, at least. So I did uh, these works, some under glass and some this way. One of them uh, very nicely ended up at the Heckscher Museum as, as a babble piece. And uh, these are acrylic. And I looked back through history and I saw a number of artists all through uh, time have actually done the theme of babble, meaning that we failed to communicate with one another. Uh, here's another one. Particularly the Dutch, I think, worked on this theme. Of course, in any decent Dutchman knows about ten languages, so that would be uh, not their problem. Well, I enjoyed doing it. This one's oil. The other one was acrylic. And uh, it, uh, it was actually inspired a little bit by the Bruegels. The Bruegels did babble pieces, and they used different colors. And, and the one that I can't show you, I have all the different languages. I collected the different languages from uh, every place I could. I have a Chinese person that gave me a phrase. I put the phrases in that were most common, like make my day, or uh, uh, in, in Czech it says take me away flies. So whoever had a, a little saying is, does have it in that particular one that I've done on Babel.